Good morning. Don't get better than that. Perfect morning on the river and a perfect spot to, to be. Our nice little island. Time to say goodbye, time to get on the water and uh, roll down some miles here. Kind of found this last minute last night and we had to make it work, but it's turned out to be uh, just about perfect. A little grassy. It was a little wet because of all the fog rolling off the river in the early morning, but that made it. Uh, you know, memorable. Just everything is soaked. So we've been air drying the stuff just a little bit, but um, we gotta we gotta pack up and start moving. I gotta, I gotta tell you, I'm in love with this Paladin tarp. The light that it gives off is just amazing. <laughs> Makes you want to sit under it. If you'd like a dark tarp, this one's not for you, but but I really like it. I've been using this one more on the trip. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's just a little smaller, and since it's not, uh, a, you know, winter camping scenario, it's easier to pitch. Being smaller, it's just a it's just a good tarp, and, and I didn't know if I was going to like it as much as I do, but I really do. I really do like the tarp. It's a little thin. We'll see how it lasts. That's the only drawback I have. That's part of the design is that it get a nice tarp this size with ultra lightweight, but you have to compromise and get that thin fabric, but. We'll see how it does. Morning of day five was absolutely perfect. After enjoying a beautiful sunrise, we packed up and said goodbye to our grassy little island. 9.45, a little later than we wanted to start, and I was having issues with my solar charger. Kevin is saving my bacon. His is working flawlessly. Mine seems to have a short in the wiring. I can't find it, I can't isolate it just yet, so we had to push on and I think Kevin's going to be able to keep us both going. I would have been able to complete the trip, but I would have had to start really metering the footage, so it wouldn't have been as good, so big props to Kevin. The wandering electrician has saved the video. I've paddled thousands of miles on all sorts of rivers, from the mountains to the ocean. I've paddled lakes, and I've paddled the big sea herself. And even though each river and each location is so different, there are many commonalities that you begin to find. Perfect little islands, perfect sunrises, 
Some rivers are big and slow with almost no current, while others are big and fast and raging. And there's rivers in between. Some rivers are steep with waterfalls. Sometimes rivers are lined with rocks and gravel bars, sometimes sand. The Namakagan and the St. Croix are lined with grass. And sometimes you're on a river and you see something that takes you back to another time and another place. And in that respect, even on a river I've never paddled, sometimes it feels like we're old friends. And of course it doesn't hurt when you're halfway across the country to look over and actually see an old friend. Just around this next corner were the start of the rapids and two options on which route to take. have more action. The main channel's better? Yeah. Okay, we I've been trying to catch you before I had to make the decision. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not looking for the main Yep. <laughs> I hear you. You ever been through the slough? I have not. Gotcha. Whew. Oh yeah, you were going pretty good pace. The decision was made we would take the main channel to the left and not the Kettle River Slough. Not knowing too much about this section, we just wanted to get the most bang for the buck. And being that my paddling started on the Whitewater Rivers of North Carolina and the Southeast, nothing makes me feel more alive and more at home on a river than some good rapids and some dancing water. And I've been paddling this boat, Nana, for several years now. And have paddled this more miles than any other boat I've ever owned. She is definitely an old friend. And she was made for rapids. And both of us are happiest when we're dead in the middle of them. ones we can find and uh, this is this is what I'm talking about uh, a river we have found our river
We're at the boat, taking our lunch, got my MRE out, some water. And of course, we have rapids, ladies and gentlemen. There's just something undeniable about water that's alive. Water that dances beneath you. It can't help but to lift your spirits. He didn't know it at the time and probably thought I was just catching a shot. But we were crossing an invisible mile marker. This old friend and I have now paddled 500 miles of river together. The rapids only lasted a few miles until they settled back down. But wouldn't you know it, just up ahead we'd find another old friend. A gravel beach. So here we are on our first gravel bar, and it's an official River King trip now. As you know, we love to stop on a gravel bar. There just haven't been any. Just uh, grass and marsh and flowage. We had to get out and just enjoy rocks. As you can see, most of the river for the last 110 miles has been uh, grass. We just came off a really good stretch of white water um, compared to what we've been doing. Uh, we could take a whole week of what we just went through. It was pretty good. So that's nice. We got some more coming. We're supposed to have some cool cliffs up here. We're looking forward to getting into that. And we just, like I said, we just want to take a minute. We've all been walking around picking up rocks for our kids and stuff like that. A little memento. But um, we threw them back down. We are not taking the rocks that we picked up, are we? Yeah. See, no, because we would never do that. Let's get these boats on down the river a few more miles. Find us a good camp. A few more miles. An intangible thing, really. But an ever-present companion on all the River King trips. 
A few more miles is always something we're striving for. It's always something out ahead of us. It gives us a purpose. And today's few more miles would be quite a few. While there were no rapids in this area, there was an unbelievable flow of water that made those miles easy. We came into an area with some sand rock cliffs on the left bank. A taste of what was to come below St. Croix Falls. The day was slipping by, but the time seemed to pass slowly. Clouds had rolled in, and it turned into the picture-perfect afternoon. The river was rolling beneath us, and the miles were ticking away. And there was no one else on the river. It was a neat dynamic, having such a big, wide open river, but making such good time. We are rounding out day five, and we are rolling down this river. Not a lot to look at. There's been a couple neat things. There's been some action on a consistent basis, but it's very, very wide and mostly featureless. So there's some pretty thing. We saw some cliffs back there, but it's kind of just a big rolling river, and we're going six plus miles an hour with just a comfortable paddle like I'm doing now. Right now I'm at 6.8. And so we're just rolling down the miles, but we're, we're kind of ready for a little break. Probably get the next landing, take a break, and then bust out the last miles to the campsite. And then uh, set up to make the, the end of the trip tomorrow. There's not a lot of campsites in this stretch. It's pretty much the most remote stretch in that sense of the word. When you get down towards uh, Croy Falls, you get a lot more campsites. So we're gonna make it to mile 76. We have three more rapids marked on the map. Two of them look like they're supposed to be pretty good. Campsite 76 is below the last rapid marked on the map. So that'll be a fitting place to do our camp. We're passing a campsite on the left, which is 82.7. So that leaves us uh, basically from this landing we'll have six miles which at this speed we'll have an hour which will put us at camp at 6 p.m that's not bad onward and just as much as dancing water makes me feel alive there was an undeniable calm about the river this evening we all just sat there and took it in it was our last night on the river, and it was absolutely stunning.
There's, there's someone in there, Brian. People in there, I believe. Yeah. How you doing? Had a really, really funny thing happen. Um, we finally made it to our campsite, and I see a food bag hanging in a tree. I was like, well, wouldn't you know it? There's someone already in it. So now we are doing it River King style. There's a couple little islands on the map, because I'm always looking ahead. And uh, to be honest with you, 100%, I didn't want to carry my boat up those stairs anyway. Perhaps this will be our home for the night. For the next hour and a half, we tried to find a campsite, but nothing would do. A couple would have worked, except there were lots of dead trees, and we had possible tornadoes in the area. So for our last evening on the river, it wouldn't have been right without our old friend, the sunset. I've paddled into the dark so many times I can't keep track. But we always find something. And so years from now, I'll tell somebody about that last camp on the St. Croix River. We had a perfect sight, a nice fire, and watched the thunderstorms roll by to the south. They'll ask me who I was with, and I'll just have to tell them. Some old friends.